This is South Sudan, a country known for its political instability, ethnic diversity, rich culture, and tall people. Really, really tall people. South Sudan, or more specifically regions surrounding the Nile River, are home to the Dinka tribe, a large ethnic group with the fourth tallest population in the world with an average height of about 6 feet for men and 5'7 for the average woman. You probably recognize a few notable Dinka tribe figures in American culture, but that's nothing compared to one Dinka family in particular. You see, back in the early 1900s, there was a Dinka tribe leader who was a staggering 7 feet 10 inches tall. That tribe leader had a daughter named Madut. She was 6'10 and married a man by the name of Akwak, who was 6'8. Madut and Akwak gave birth to a baby girl who grew to be 6 feet 8 inches tall herself. Later on in 1962, Madut and Akwak were forced to seek refuge in a small village fleeing from the South Sudan Civil War. This same year, Madut gave birth to a boy. An extraordinarily tall boy, but born into an impoverished village with virtually no resources, had no means of measuring himself. That boy grew up and married a 6 foot 3 inch Dinka woman. Later on in life, he moved to the United States and at the age of 18, he finally discovered how tall he actually was. 7 feet 7 inches. His name was Minut and he had a 7 foot 10 inch grandfather, a family tree of giants, and he spent 10 years sending shots into the third row in the NBA. Now I ask myself, with all of this height, a build and skill set practically designed for basketball, and elite level connections within the basketball world, how long could it possibly take before Minute produced a child with NBA potential? Well, the answer is 10. Exactly 10. Of those 10, one was destined for greatness. Suitably named after his 7 foot 10 inch great grandfather. And from the plains of South Sudan to a small gym in Kansas, the basketball gods aligned all of their stars for this Dinka tribe descendant. The 2019 NBA Draft is littered with potential NBA game changers. There is the obvious Duke trio in Zion, Barrett, and Reddish, John ja Morant, a player that gives us flashbacks of a young Derrick Rose, a silky smooth point guard in Darius Garland, the dangerously lethal Kevin Porter out of USC, and the big man that got the nation talking with his high performance in the NCAA tournament this year, Taco Fall. You also have a handful of these players who it seemed like just yesterday that we were breaking down their high school highlights, like Tyler Hero, Jalen Hands, Jonte Porter. You know, a lot of people say that this year's draft is a bit underwhelming or that it's top heavy. Outside of the first three to five picks, there isn't much to be excited about. But I beg to differ. In fact, I completely disagree. This year's draft has exceptional talent, it has depth, it has potential, and it has a few big time sleepers. None bigger than that young man from the Dinka tribe, Bulbul. Bul. So before we talk about his clearly obvious world class stature, I want to talk about a few other aspects of his game that make Bulbul Bul special. First, his defensive dominance. Bull's timing on defense resembles that of a veteran big. He's long enough that he doesn't have to leave his feet to contest shots, but when he does leave the floor, he's nearly impossible to go over. His insane 9 foot 7 inch standing reach is already unfair, but match that with his elite athleticism, and he truly becomes a mismatch for nearly anyone given the task of guarding him or being guarded by him. Just like his father, Bull manages to get the absolute most out of his height and length on the defensive end by combining all of these strengths. Now, Bull only played 9 games this past year for the University of Oregon before sustaining a season-ending injury. But in those 9 games, he averaged 2.7 blocks per game, 6th best in the entire NCAA which shouldn't really be to anyone's surprise. Throughout his father's entire NBA career, Manu averaged 3.3 blocks per game, not just because he was a walking skyscraper, but because of his impeccable defensive instincts and his athleticism that you'd never expect from one of the tallest men in the entire world. Fortunately for Bull, his father passed down these tools along with much, much more. 
Most guys 7 feet 2 inches or taller pay a hefty price for all that size. They are usually heavy footed, struggle to get up and down the floor, and don't have the bounce in their step that most smaller guys have. They also tend to lack a soft touch once they get any further than about 15 feet from the basket. In recent years, we've seen a few players defy this trend, but for the most part, this is where big guys stand. A bit clumsy, a bit slow, but long enough to make things happen. But Bull Bull is everything you would not expect from a 7 foot 2 inch center. Imagine you create a player on 2K. You max out his height, max out his wingspan, crank his offensive skill sets way up. And I'm not talking about the stereotypical big man skill sets, strength, post moves, things like that. I'm talking about all of them. Outside game, inside game, mid range, vision, touch, passing and just for kicks and giggles, max out his shot blocking while you're at it. As far as all of those other attributes, well, you ran out of VC, so you just leave them where they're at. You can work on those later. And bada bing bada bang, you've got Bull Bull. He's that player you create when you just want to cheese absolutely everyone online. Another aspect of his game that doesn't get as much attention as it should is his shooting ability and even more impressive, his ability to create shots. He has a set of moves that opens him up to shots from anywhere on the floor, backing down in the post, mid-range, and the three ball. And not only can he get to these shots, he's lethal once he gets there. Bull doesn't just shoot well for a big man. He is a 7 foot 2 inch sniper. This past season, Bull shot 56% from the field and 52% from three which means that this 7 foot 2 inch center shot the best 3 point percentage of anyone in the entire NCAA last season. Of course, he was only on the floor for about a third of the season, but this is the sample size we have to work with. In fact, over the last 10 years, only 18 players in the entire NCAA have shot 52% or better from 3. Most of these players were around 6 feet tall. A couple of these guys would make Isaiah Thomas feel pretty good about his stature, and the tallest of them was back in 2014, a 6 foot 7 inch guard named Niles Giffey. But other than him, there isn't much size to go around here. And then there's Bulbul, Bul, an absolute anomaly. But if you're even briefly familiar with his father's game, Bulbul's Bul shooting touch shouldn't surprise you too much. For most of his career, Manute played in an NBA that saw minimal threes. Entire NBA teams shot four, five, maybe six threes a game for Manute's best years. But that didn't stop him from pulling up from deep far more than any other center before him. In fact, you might remember the nights where Manute hit six three-pointers in a single game. Oh wait, I mean a single half. Manute's numbers don't really give his outside touch the justice it deserves, but just search Manute Bull 3 pointer on YouTube and watch the shenanigans unfold before you. Seven footers were not designed to do this in the 80s. But lucky for Bull Bull, in 2019, seven footers are encouraged to expand their outside game rather than deterred from it. He's got this silky smooth pull up game that you just can't teach and the handles to get wherever he needs to on the floor. He also possesses the patience of a true veteran big when he's working down low. He can get to his spot and once he's there, good luck doing anything to contest it. Bull Bull can cover more area vertically than any other player in the entire NBA other than his fellow draft class member Taco Fall. It also must be noted that these measurements were taken two years ago, when Bull was only 17 years old. And if you've been following him the past few years, you know that he's grown since then. But excluding Kristaps Porzingis, when these big men and the majority of 7 footers shoot anything outside of 10 feet, it looks awkward, like they shouldn't be shooting that shot. But that's not the case with Bull Bull. In fact, most scouting reports compare his game to Kristaps Porzingis, which is understandable. Tall, long, can handle the ball if you need him to, athletic and light on his feet for a 7 footer, but personally, I see the influence of a different player when I watch Bull play. Someone who most NBA players claim is a true 7 footer, but has the skills of a guard. And that is Kevin Durant. Earlier on in KD's basketball career, his game was a bit less refined, but the arsenal has always been visible. Scoring from a variety of moves, can get to a spot down low or pull up from outside. 
also displays consistency and proficiency from mid-range, something that is becoming more and more rare. Can defend outside, but can also protect the paint with his length, timing, and athleticism. Has the size to be a favorable matchup at his position almost every time, but has the skill set to not rely on his size alone to get buckets. Could definitely benefit from putting on some weights and certainly cannot assert himself through physical strength alone. Now doesn't all of that sound eerily familiar? So you're probably thinking, if Bol Bol has all of this incredible potential, all of this height and skill, why is he projected to go 15th overall and not higher? Well, first things first, we gotta talk about that foot injury. It was enough to take him out for two thirds of the season, and at his size, I think it's fair to say that it's a legitimate concern. But with that being said, with great risk comes great reward. We have seen countless big men fall to serious injuries, but we've also seen players bounce back and come back better than before. At his young age, I 100% feel that with the right staff around him and with sufficient recovery time, Bull will have no problem exceeding his current level of play healthier than ever. Some scouts have concerns that his slim frame will be a problem as a big man in the NBA, and again concerns with injury, but consider the fact that Bull doesn't rely on physical strength to assert himself on offense or defense anyways. Durant and Porzingis aren't strong either, and they are elite on both ends of the floor because strength was never something they fell back on. Rather, they allowed their athleticism, length, and skill set to do the heavy lifting. Manute's career was virtually ended by a knee injury, which again isn't uncommon for players of this stature. But at his peak, Manute was 7 foot 7 inches, 190 pounds. Bol Bol is 5 inches shorter and already 30 pounds heavier. His frame is slim, but far from fragile. Sometimes freak injuries happen, and I think that's all that foot injury was. So if the only concerns regarding this 7 foot 2 inch offensively gifted shot blocker is his slim frame and a season ending injury, sign me up. The kid has a calm, cool, and collected aspect to his game that you just can't teach. He protects the rim on one end and can attack it with elite proficiency on the other. Leave him outside and he'll make you pay, close out on him and he has the athleticism to blow past you. Put a big man on him and watch Bull size him up from all three levels. Put a little guy on him and watch how he shoots right over his head without hesitation. If you're looking for a guy who can improve your organization the day he's drafted, well, there's a few other guys in this draft who can do that for you. But if you're looking for a long-term prospect with all the tools in his toolbox and a ceiling higher than just about everyone else, you're looking at him. Of course, all of his tools need to be sharpened and refined, but if an organization is willing to take the time with this young man, figure out what makes him tick, and keep him healthy, we will look back on the 2019 NBA Draft and wonder, how did the NBA let Bol Bol slip to the 17th pick, and how did we not see this kid coming? Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.